In the previous video, I defined vectors and Euclidean space in any dimension. In this video, I want to define the operations on vectors. Since they are made of numbers, vectors inherit operations from numbers, and how this works needs to be made clear and formal. What operations work on vectors and what operations fail? What new operations can be defined? Since vectors are interpreted geometrically as points and arrows in space, all these operations will also have interpretations. I'm going to give the algebraic definitions of the operations, but also the geometric visualizations of the operations to better understand what they mean. I'll start with addition. Vectors can be added just by adding the components. Start in R2 with the vectors 1, 3, and 3, 1. To add them, I add the first components together, 1 plus 3 is 4, and then the second components together, 3 plus 1 is 4. This is a component-wise operation. Everything happens individually in each spot in the list. To write this in general, for any Rn, I write two vectors uv as components. u has components u1, u2, and so on up to un. v also has components v1, v2, and up to vn. These symbols, u1, v2, all of them, they are variables that stand for the numbers in the vector. It's very valuable to be able to write the vectors this way because they stand for any vector. Then I show how the addition works, adding in the first component, the second component, and so on to the end. Since u and v are written with variables, generally, this shows how the addition works for any two vectors in Rn. This is particularly important when doing proofs, since for proofs, I need to work with a generic vector, not with a specific example. What does this addition look like? Geometrically, adding two vectors is connecting the two arrows one after the other. u plus v is first 1, 3, and then 3, 1 at the start of the end of 1, 3, producing the vector 4, 4. Notice that I could do this in the other order as well. v plus u means 3, 1 first, and then 1, 3 at the end of 3, 1. And again, I find my way to, 1, 4, to 4, 4. This is addition. I might next ask about multiplication. I could just define multiplication in the same way as addition, component-wise. That's not invalid, but it turns out not to be a particularly interesting or useful operation. Therefore, mathematicians usually say that vectors don't multiply together in the ordinary way. Instead, I will define a scalar multiplication. Recall that a scalar is just a number, so scalar multiplication is the multiplication of a vector by a number. So take the number 2 and the vector 1, 2. Then scalar multiplication is simply multiplying by the scalar with every entry in the vector. 2 times the first entry 1 produces 2. 2 times the second entry 2 produces 4. In scalar multiplication, the scalar is written on the left and the vector is written on the right. To write this generally, I use the variable a to stand for an arbitrary scalar and u to stand for an arbitrary vector in Rn. If I write u in its components, u1, u2, up to un, then scalar multiplication is multiplying a by each of the components one at a time, and the result is a new vector in Rn with entries a times u1, a times u2, all the way up to a times un. This multiplication is something quite new. Number multiplication takes two numbers and produces a number. This multiplication takes two different things, a scalar and a vector, and produces a new vector. What does this look like? Well, scalar multiplication actually explains the term scalar for numbers. Scalar multiplication just scales the vector. Take the vector 1, 2. Scalar multiplication by 2 doubles the vector to 2, 4. Scalar multiplication by 1 quarter cuts the vector to 1 quarter of the original, producing 1 quarter, 1 half. If the scalar is negative, the vector flips. So negative 1 times 1, 2 is negative 1, negative 2. And negative 2 times 1, 2 both, is both doubled and flipped to negative 2, negative 4. Now that I have both addition and scalar multiplication, I actually get subtraction without any extra definition. Subtraction of two vectors is just the addition with a negative 1 scalar multiplication on the second vector. Visually, this is like adding the flipped vector. I've written it here again using general vectors in Rn to show that subtraction of vectors is just subtraction in each component separately. The length of a vector is a new operation written with vertical bars around the vector. 
Geometrically, it does what it says, tells you how long the arrow is. The algebra is just the Pythagorean rule for triangles, a squared equals b squared plus c squared, but extended. The length of a vector u is the square root of all the squares of each component. And this works for any dimension. In two dimensions, this is conventional Pythagoras. The length of 3 and negative 2 is the square root of 3 squared and negative 2 squared, which works out to root 13. In three dimensions, you just have three squares under the root. The length of 1, negative 2, 4 is the square root of 1 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 4 squared, which works out to root 21. This works in higher dimensions, even though I can't see any of the vectors in R4. I can still know that the length of the vector 0, negative 5, 2, 3 is the square root of the squares of the components, which works out to root 38. Sometimes the square root is annoying to work with. In these cases, I can often use the square of the length instead of the length, which can be calculated just as the sum of the squares of the components. The length of a vector is also called the norm of a vector. A vector of length 1 is called a unit vector, and finally the zero vector, all zeros, is the only vector that has length 0. With length and subtraction, I can define the distance between two vectors as the length of the subtraction. The distance between 4, 2, and 1, 4 is the length of 3, negative 2, since that is the subtraction. 4 minus 1 is 3, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Then I take the length, square root of 3 squared and negative 2, 2 squared, which is root 13. Visually, this difference is the local direction vector going from the end of 1, 4 to the end of 4, 2. As a local direction, I can see that this does go 3 units to the right and 2 units down, and the length of it is again Pythagoras by drawing the right triangle. The hypotenuse here will have length root 13. In this video, I have defined a lot of operations on vectors. Addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication, length, distance. These are defined algebraically but given meaning and interpretation geometrically. As a mathematician, I want to understand the theory of vectors. I've defined these tools and given them useful interpretation, but I want to know how they work, how they fit together, what properties they have. This is one of the core ideas behind the development of mathematics, behind mathematics research. Having abstracted these ideas into formal de definitions, how does the theory work? I'm going to end this video with one example of this investigation of properties, the triangle inequality. This inequality relates the length of two vectors to the length of their sum, stating that the sum of the two individual lengths is always at least as large as the length of the sum. The proof of this inequality is going to be used as an exercise later in the term, but let me give you the visualization which serves as some intuition for the result. This is the sum diagram I used earlier. This inequality is called the triangle inequality because of the three lengths. The lengths of u, v, and u plus v form a triangle. The lengths of the two vectors form two sides of the triangle, and the length of the sum is the third side. The inequality says that the length of one side of a triangle cannot be larger than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. And this makes perfect intuitive sense from the diagram, and you can imagine that it makes sense no matter how, how I draw the triangle. Do note, of course, that I can't prove the triangle inequality by drawing the diagram. The diagram is a great intuition, and it is some evidence that the claim is reasonable, but it is not a proof.